is Oz by Drone. I'm trying to find the audio channel to turn down that music. There it is. There was okay. something wrong on the screen. I'm Greg. And I'm not John. Yeah, Bye. so John's not here today and apologies for that, everyone. He'll be back again in the very near future and apologies for that weird fade. There was something missing on the screen and I couldn't work out which channel had the audio for that, but we're all good now. Anyway, welcome to Oz by Drone, and if you're new here, we, um, we talk about drones and related technology every week. Um, our regular co-host is uh, unavailable today. He had something else that um, came up, and our guest that we normally were going to have today was also unavailable. So we've got two for one, and Paul Parter Cooper has joined us today, both as co-host and also going to talk to us about some other stuff. So welcome, Paul. Good morning. So, Paul... Welcome, everybody. Yeah, thanks. So, so, oh, I'm here seeing someone say sound. Let me just make sure. Is, uh, let me have a look here. There we go. That should be okay. So, um, so Paul is a regular watching our show, and he's also involved in Morrison Aerial Robotics with John. But um, just tell us a little bit about yourself, Paul. What what your career has involved, and how you got into drones. I think, I think we'll, we'll talk about how I got into drones. Was, uh, I've been interested in radio controlled car racing. Um, and as a kid, I, I used to watch these guys down the park flying their, um, their radio control aeroplanes. And it, it just it had me fascinated for years. Uh, I, you know, for, for, for one reason or other, I didn't want to spend the money on, on buying an aeroplane or, or building an aeroplane, but I got into the cars. But then from then, I saw on the. Um, a YouTube, uh, a little drone, many years ago, flying it. And I thought that just looked fast, fascinating. You know, I have to get into this. I can see the potential, um, and from then it's led, as you can see by the beast behind me. I got a bit uh, carried away with uh, with building drones. Yeah, but, absolutely. Uh, and just a quick one. <laughs> I've just turned your volume up a little bit more, Paul. So we should be okay now. But okay, um, good. yeah, so. This is the beast, and we're gonna let, let's just quickly go into a little bit more about that later. But we're gonna start first with the news. So let's press, and I always should be ready for this. There we go. Okay, and as always, our news we um, we have sources coming from multiple places, but. There is a wiki site available, and I do encourage you to have a look at the wiki site. So dji.retroroms.info slash news. This is compiled by Jeff Sills. We also get some news articles that we do ourselves um, from one of our viewers from, from Greg Hilton. So thank you to both of those people, as always. But before we get into anything else, let's start with DJI. More leaks than the Titanic. Okay. So... I just want to have a quick little chat about this. So, you know, we've all seen the photos of the um, DJI Mavic 2 or Mavic Pro 2, whatever you want to call it. But in the last 24 hours, we got some more photos. And let's have a look at one of those now. So just starting, this is something that appeared in a, a catalogue. And this was picked up by another YouTuber who went into a shop and um, they saw this live. And we'll have a look at the next one, zooming in on a few bits of this. <clears throat> so as you can see there, we've got two models. Um, we've got the the pro version and the zoom version. Um, one inch, yeah, one inch CMOS sensor. Let's click the next one. So one inch CMOS sensor, um, Hasselblad camera. Obviously, they're very much tied to to that organisation. And uh, we've also got a two times optical zoom in the zoom version. Now, it doesn't say what type of sensor you've got with the zoom version, but we'll just have to wait and see for that. But let's have a look. We've got one more little photo just zooming in on that. So this is the article um, in detail out of that catalog. So 1080p. Um, here's an interesting one. Eight kilometers distance, transmission distance. It's I love how this is one of their advertising features and, you know, in just about any country in the world, um, you're not meant to be doing that. But that's another story for another day. Yes. Um, what else have we got there? 20 metres per second. That's about 72 kilometres per hour, I think. Um, 
What else have we got there? We've got the dolly zoom. This one I actually like. That's a really cool effect on the zoom model where as you are getting closer to a subject, just imagine you've got a subject in the center, you're keeping its size the same, but the size of the background is proportionally changing. Oh, yeah. 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 A good effect, that is. Yeah. yeah. So, so what do you think about all of this? I mean, I haven't um, prepped you with any of this, but what are your thoughts on the, the whole Mavic um, I, I, you know, yeah, I, I don't loops. have a Mavic and I've, I've not flown a Mavic. I know John loves them. Mm. Um, I've, I've got a um, the, the Phantom 4, I've got two of those. Um, so they're, they're, I don't do all that much camera work. Mm. So, and I think that's what these, 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 these uh, um, aircraft are, um, flying cameras. So... Um, the uh, the Mavic, I, I can't. I really can't comment on the Mavic. I don't know much about it at all. Yeah. The, uh, but, but as for the, for the you know DJI leaking uh, all these latest uh, products, you know, I, <laughs> I you know I'll believe it when I see it. That's the sort of thing that that's the way I look at them. Yeah, yeah. Look, there, there was someone who's um, made a comment that he thought this leak in this publication was, you know, a deliberate DJI tactic. I'm going to make a comment myself that I don't think it was. Um, the reason I make that comment, my, my father worked in the printing industry for many years and I kind of know how the preparation time for documents and catalogues and magazines, how long it takes to go and get those things happening. So, you know, I think that was a legitimate press time kind of thing. When DJ right. cancelled their event, they'd already done their pre-production work and their plates had already been made and what have you. So... But the other photos, I think they were deliberate leaks. That's just my opinion. Um, so we'll have to wait and see. Yeah. Anyway, I, so sorry, go. Oh no, it's just I, 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 I don't. I, I have. I've had a few issues with DJI over the over the last years or so. You know, with the, especially when building my own drones and the um, and having uh, problems with the firmware and. Uh, Getting the, getting the aircraft to link with the um, with the light bridge systems and the computer, I, I get no no feedback from them. You know, you like uh, I have trouble with the um, with the linking the the light bridge to the to um, the uh, uh, DJI assistant software, and then they say, uh, "What's the problem?" I tell them what the problem is, and they say, "Oh, send me a video of it." Yeah. So, what, <laughs> what's that going to do? I can't. You know. Uh, uh, yeah. Anyway. Okay. Anyway, um, to answer a question in the chat, who else is posting the chat? Mel, I was. I'll stop doing that now that you've arrived and um, apologies for double dipping in the chat. So I'll let you take over. Anyway, so look, the whole release, we'll have to wait and see a little bit more. Um, Ken's just posted a link in. I'm just going to press that one myself, Mel. Um, this is a, a link that Ken is putting in. Um, he did a video on this earlier today, and it certainly got a little bit more info than we're going to talk about today. So I encourage you all to have a look at that link on Ken's channel. Anyway, moving on from that. So I'll let Mel take over all of the titling now, and we're going to move on to our next news article, which is this one. So BAE Systems, they've um, created a solar UAV, and... Um, Essentially, this is an aircraft that can stay in the air for literally 12 months. So let's go and have a look at the clip first and we'll go from there. Phaser 35 is a solar powered, high altitude, long endurance, unmanned aerial vehicle, HAIL UAV. It's a 35 meter mm -hmm. wingspan. No aircraft, sound. Uh, but the structure of it weighs only 50 kilograms. So it's, it's very efficient, very light, and enables it to fly at high altitude for very long durations, providing services such as communications and remote sensing. Well, we became involved in the program because we were, we were actually looking at space, not, not so much as at, at high altitude uh, UASs, but there's a very close <coughs> distinction between high altitude pseudo satellites, as we call them, and then the space industry. And we met through contacts in, in the space sector and we, saw, we felt that there were great synergies between what Prismatic were doing and what we, we, what we were looking to do within BA Systems. Bringing BA Systems into the agreement is absolutely critical to us. We're a small development company. Our skills lie in developing innovative technologies and systems, but we don't have the capability for the productionization and the provision of services, which is where the real value lies. 
what we aim to do next is we, we aim to sort of continue to develop the technologies, to aim to productionise this and uh, find a way to go to market jointly. So there we have it. So that was the BAE Systems. And just so our guests um, listening in the, um, the show today know, when I've got um, a video playing, unfortunately, the remote guest doesn't get to hear the video. So that gets a bit confusing for him. But um, you guys all heard it. Anyway, back to the point. Um, so yeah, look, it looks like a really interesting piece of technology and solar UAV, the whole idea of staying airborne for a year. Certainly, there's many, many uh, applications for that. Yeah, you've got to wonder what sort of payload it can carry, you know, but uh, that, that's only early days, so uh, they're still developing. It'll be interesting in a, in a few years to see, you know, um, with, with, a, with a, a greater payload, it's going to, you're limited by your, your imagination, basically, aren't you? Yeah, absolutely. So that's our, our first news article today. Uh, our second one we've got is... Um, Intel, a lot of you guys have already seen um, some of the previous Intel things, particularly with the, um, the Olympic Games, the Winter Olympics and so forth. But um, Intel have upped their own game a little bit and broken their own record. So they previously had, I think it was one and a half thousand. Now they've gone to 2018 drones in the year, considering it's two, the year is 2018. Um, they wanted to do that to... Um, as part of their 50th anniversary celebration. So let's have a look at that video. I wouldn't have guessed this was possible. To break a record of flying 2,000 drones at the same time controlled by a single computer, it's quite amazing to see. When we heard about the 50th anniversary celebrations for Intel, we said, how do we contribute to that? How do we make it big? And getting the Guinness World Record is really special for all of us. So the Intel Shooting Star drone is a drone dedicated for light shows. It doesn't have any sensors, it doesn't have any cameras. It only has an LED underneath. We designed the Intel Shooting Star system where we could fly a limitless amount of drones. Every single time we do a show, it's quite unique. This one is really special. You'll see the history of Intel in the night sky. All of you is in position. We are okay in position. Three, two, one, launching. So one of the reasons why I wanted to play this video, aside from the, the wonderful imagery that we see there, is just to have a quick little de debate and discussion. So obviously this is night flying. Um, I don't know what the rules and regs are in the US, but does this mean that Intel has 2018 <laughs> applications in for permission to fly at night? Um, and it, it was certainly this particular light show was conducted, I understand, in California. So interesting regulatory question. How do they actually do that? Is there a blanket exemption for these shows? What are the controls that they have? Obviously, that's their intellectual property, and they're not going to go and share with us how they did it. But certainly, <laughs> there's a lot of regulatory <laughs> questions around that one. It's a huge amount of airspace that they're taking up, you know. It's, uh, it'll be, uh, I think that... It'll, Special dispensation is, is, is the only way you could do it, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so moving from there, the next one we've got is um, County UAS. So there's a few regulars um, who, who um, we've, we've talked about County UAS before. Um, there's Kevin Finister, who was a guest on here once before. Um, he works for a company that makes some products, but this is some military testing of some counter UAS technology. Let's have a look at that. Hovering sometimes tens of thousands of feet in the air. Unmanned aerial vehicles, or drones, are a game changer, both They've for the good and the bad. Over the parking lot. With a massive technology boom, uh, the enemy is able to get their hands on uh, UAS systems, commercial off the shelf. Combating against the threat of drones is key, as technological advances aren't slowing down. Here, Oklahoma Army National Guard members of 1st Squadron, 180th Cavalry Regiment, currently deployed to Afghanistan as part of Operation Resolute Support, conduct a drone training exercise utilizing counter UAS equipment. 
they flew a drone into our airspace here where we used some of our equipment to detect them within the electromagnetic spectrum. Then we sent out individuals to visually identify it and then we started sending out some equipment so that we can defeat it using the same spectrum that... that so they've got those um, RF the cannons that they use to bring them down. Essentially they're um, overwhelming the RF receivers on the devices and that's the method of bringing them down. Obviously the methods of detection are a little bit different to that. But let's talk about this. So I know in Australia um, they had the, um, the Commonwealth Games up in Brisbane. And they, they had some of, you know, some counter UAS technology up there for that particular event. Here's my discussion point and my discussion question. Um, when is it okay to bring down a drone and who should decide that? Now, I have no problem whatsoever that armed forces and military should be doing what they're doing. But in a civilian setting, when is it okay to bring down a drone? Yeah, uh, that's, that's, a, that's a very good question. You, you, you. Um, if they're not, they're not harming anyone. Uh, what's the problem? You, you, the only problem you'd have would be your privacy, and that when you think that they're spying on you. Uh, but how do you prove that? Yeah, I mean, you know? yeah, I mean, here's the thing, right? So in Australia, under our regulations, as I understand it, a drone has the same categorization as an aircraft. So yes. if you bring down a drone it is exactly the same as if you're bringing down a Boeing 747 in terms of the legalities of what it is that you're doing. So again, my question, who then can decide to give exemptions to that and under what conditions? It's an interesting discussion. Anyway, look forward to your comments and questions in the chat room, but what do you think? What do you think, Paul? Um, yeah, I, I can't see that you could have any. That, that it can't be legal. Um, the um, the only people that could that, that could actually, oh, I don't know, who could bring a, be allowed to bring a drone unless it's uh, over a military base, over uh, uh, a prison. Um, I can't think of anywhere else where it would be uh, maybe a sporting event. But then you'd have to bring the drone down safely, you know. But yeah. Then, but that's another interesting question, yeah. right? So bringing down a drone over a prison, and this is something that I know that John obviously has been doing some work with regard to testing of drones over a prison. Um, what are the regulations in our country currently to allow bringing it down? Detection is easy. Um, is it a no-fly zone officially endorsed by CASA? It's, it's a lot of legal questions that, you know, are, are still outstanding, I think. Yeah, I, I, what's the... Ha when they bring them down, does it does it is it does it go uh, um, return to home or uh, RTF or or does it come land on the on the spot basically where they where they hit it? You know that would depend on the particular device in question. Um, yeah. uh, however, their manufacturer have programmed it, but essentially their RF chips are overloaded with the amount of signal coming in, and when that happens, then they return. Um, yeah, exactly right. So it may return to home or it may land in place. It depends on both the programming and what the manufacturer has designed. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, most of them, yeah, most of the ones you'll see are, are phantom, so they'll be, um, they'll be returning to home. Yeah. Anyway, moving on from there, so the next topic I want to briefly look at, and I don't have any video for this. Um, this one is um, Expo UAV. Um, EASA has um, recently um, adopted European wide drone rules which is, you know, for, for Europe, it's good. Airspace previously was governed by um, multiple different local things within, within Europe, but the fact that they've brought that together, I think, is a good thing. But here's my question. Um, how does that interplay with local governments? Like, just, just if we pick Australia and we, we pick the US for a minute, right? So they've got councils, they've got um, states, you've got state parks, you've got all of these different groups saying you're not allowed to fly a drone here. Now, even recently I went to somewhere and a council had erected uh, this is a drone free zone and the council hadn't approved that. Someone just thought it was a good idea in council and did it by themselves. Yeah. Yeah. So here's the question for the, you know, the European thing. It's good that they're bringing all of these regulations back together. But what about what happens on the ground? It's all very well to say, hey, we can fly anywhere, but what if you can't take off? So a lot of, 
questions unanswered about that as well. Yeah, I, I, I had that, that, that issue. We, we can. I was talking to John yesterday about the, the airspace. Um, it, it's, it's government uh, um, land, basically, up to 400 feet or 120 metres. Uh, but it's the, the, the taking off and landing where the, where the, where the problem comes, you know. Uh, Absolutely. You know, you've got to find a, a park. And then, then when, you, when you do find a park, they've got that silly little sign up saying that you can't fly radio control or remote control aircraft, you know. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's really crazy that you, you can't... Let, let's talk about what it is. At the end of the day, a, a remote control is a remote control. Does that mean... Why can one remote control be used in a park but not another? So, for example, I can press the remote control button to open my car, mm. but I can't fly a drone. CASA in Australia regulates the flying of drones. Yes. It's, it's one of those things that I, I just think needs to be cleaned up and regulated from a single group within, within Australia, certainly. I'd love it if CASA took over that. I've had that discussion with John. There's differing opinions as to why and how that should happen. But anyway, just thought I'd share some of that. Mm. But let's move on from there. So um, we were going to have a special guest today. We were going to have Rick from Drone Valley. And Rick apologizes. Um, he had a wedding in his calendar that he neglected to um, double check and it conflicted. So instead of having Rick here, and I just pressed the wrong button, that was my bad, there we go. <coughs> so Paul, you're filling in both for John and as a guest today. So let's, um, t let's go into a little bit more detail. You've got, a, you've got an aircraft there behind you. I've got an aircraft behind me here and it's uh, a Taro T-18. And the 18 stands for 18-inch propellers. So uh, it's, uh, it's bare without, a, without any, uh, any payload. It weighs about 7 kilo. Um, it has a hover thrust of 17.8 uh, kilo. So we've got you know, good 10 um, kilo that we can play with for, uh, for a payload. Yeah. Uh, it took me a while to build. Had a few issues with the build, um, with the um, DJI A2 flight controller. Uh, when you when you set these up, the uh, you get a um, um, a little app that's a um, uh, an assistant software, and then you can put all your parameters in where you've put your GPS, where you've set the the uh, actual flight controller, where you put the the IMU, which is the uh, um, inertia, and the. But with the with the soft with the with the um, the app, it's so small on my um, uh, computer that I can't read the <laughs> I can't read the writing properly. And what I had done was I'd set the uh, the GPS puck under the uh, according to the the the, uh, the software, uh, the, um, the GPS puck was under the aircraft. Mm. So the first flight, the uh, aircraft thought it was upside down and decided it wanted to write itself. Okay, <laughs> that was that. That'd be it interesting. Was, it wasn't fun because uh, it was a thousand bucks worth of props that uh, got smashed up. You know. Yeah, yeah I just not, put not, the not, photos of your um, aircraft fleet on the screen there. So we've got the beast. So we've got the big beast there. Then we've got a Phantom Four uh, Advance sitting there. So to give you an idea of the size. And then I've got a uh, a Taro Six Fifty uh, Iron Man, which has got similar size props to the to the to the beast. Um, so it's got a good uh, lift capacity as well. I've got under these, under the um, the Taro 650, I've got a couple of little uh, release devices so that we can uh, carry um, parcels or carry uh, uh, bait for, or a fishing line if you want to take take it out, uh, uh, do a fish, uh, long distance fishing, if you know what I mean, you know. Um, and, and whatever else that we could... Uh, we can devise for uh, that the um, uh, oh, and before I forget the uh, water sampling, which okay. I have, I have the little beast here. But just thought I might. Uh... So what came first while you while you're getting that? So you, yeah. what, what was the prompting to build something that big? Uh, yeah, I, I I had visions of hanging a great big camera off the bottom of it, you know, and, and uh, renting myself out to uh, to, to cameramen, mm. and then 
and then <laughs> getting them to trust me to fly their very expensive cameras around. Yeah. Um, it, it was it was a loose uh, uh, idea of what I was going to do with it, what it but the, the main objective was just to get the thing built. Uh, I just wanted to see if I could build one hell of a big um, drone, you know. Okay. So, okay, that, so size was important for you. You wanted to build a big one. Yeah, uh, we got that far. Um, we got it flying. I think uh, John's got some video of that uh, cruising around the skies. I don't know if you've got that uh, video, have you? Yeah, let's have a look. Um, so we've got a quick video on um, the drone in the air. It's not a high-res one, so apologies for that. Yeah. So this is up at a, a local field. This is up Terry Hills. Terry Hills, yeah. Mm. So it, it does fly beautifully. Yeah. Yeah. And we've got one more video as well. You mentioned before you had a couple of um, release devices. Yes. So let's have the... a look at that video as well. And we're delivering a couple of presents. Much to the, um, the excitement of the kids. Yeah. So it's interesting that everyone's talked about delivery drones, but... Um, doing multiple drops from uh, an individual drone at the same time. Certainly it's the first time I've personally witnessed someone set that up, which is good. So you had two bags there, made the first drop, that was picked up by someone, and then here's the second drop. Yeah, yeah. So we, obviously we make sure that everyone's back away from the, uh, the drop, the drop zone. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was watching this the first time, I thought to myself, he's trying to land on the pad, were you? I was trying to get closer with the. Uh, um, I was too more interested in getting the thing closer to the ground rather than. Uh, yeah. yeah. And, and uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I can't see anyway. Okay. Yeah, so it worked. It worked quite well. Um, so now we're we're experimenting with um, uh, using that um, that release mechanism to do some water sampling. Okay. I've got I've got the little thing here. If I can sort of get it to do what I want it to do. Just bear with me for a minute. Yep. No problem. So if you can see that. I'll just um make there we go. You got it there? Yep. Right, and then once we uh, went to, we'll drop it down to to whatever, uh, depending on the, the length of the, the 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 wire or the rope, um, depends on how deep we can we can go with it. If, uh, so if you're in a in a a mine site and you've got sort of runoff and you want to check the the your water sampling of it, we drop it down maybe ten meters, five meters into the water, and then we'll hit the release mechanism, and. Uh, it just slams shut, collects the water, then we okay. take it, fly it back, and then just open the pour the water out and do a water sample. Okay, That's certainly another use. Way. Certainly another use for for drones that um, you know people may not have um, seen before. But interesting. Have you have you tried any other payloads? Like you've done the water sampling. What else have you played with? Well, I'm, I'm thinking of doing a um, um, sediment sampling, So, but I've got to build a little scoop. Yeah. Uh, the, the, I've got the plan, of, um, but I don't have the springs to, to, for the shut mechanism to get the okay. scoop to, to, to shut the, uh, to grab the, uh, the, the sediment, you know. Yeah. Um, I have approached quite a few spring manufacturers, but they want me to order about two or 3,000 before they make one up, you see. <laughs> Yeah, but I, I haven't been able to find one that that, that actually suits the the, the, the implement okay. that I want to build up. You know. Okay. Look, interesting. So we're going to have a, a quick little break from from this topic at the moment and move yep. on. So the next one we're going to do is, I want to talk about how did you build it. So if I go over there and there and there and actually before we do that, you know what? I want to have a quick little interlude. So just a reminder, um, we've got a competition in play. So 
at the moment we're trying to hit our target of a thousand subscribers and uh, we're not quite there yet um, there's a there's a shot that's got our subscriber count somewhere that one so let's see where we're at today there we go 486 so thank you to everyone who has subscribed we've almost hit the the half century or half thousand half K I should say so my ask of everyone who's watching us at the moment um, have a look at that and see if you can um, you know bring in some additional subscribers if every single person who's a subscriber now got one more person we'd be very close to 1k now um, and when we hit that number we've got a DJI Osmo mobile let me find it so this little beast here is ready to be given to someone So my ask of everyone here today, if you could help out and get just ask one more person to come and join the channel. In fact, there's an idea. I saw someone else do this. Ken, you had a great idea. So there's an existing competition video that's up and you needed to comment in that video to, to enter the competition. But if you'd like to double your chance of winning, if you could put the name of one additional subscriber in as a comment in that video, you'll have two entries in the competition. So... Have a look for that video and um, and look at winning that particular thing. Moving on from that, again we've got. So we usually like to have a little bit of time to have a look at the questions coming in in the chat. Let's um, let's do that now. What have we got? So subscribe for Vegemite. You know, I'm sending some Vegemite out to, um, I've already sent some to Chris. I'm going to send some out in the, uh, sorry, to Ken. I'm sending some to uh, Chris as well. So we'll get some interesting fun with that. Daryl Lizard, Aussie English, Ken Heron. Um, Mick Malloy, I have three words for you. Oi, oi, oi. <laughs> Um, I spike. Yep, already in the competition. I really need a gimbal to make better films. <laughs> nice. Um, vertical videos make me crazy. Yeah. I always thought Canadian accent was American. Yeah. Well, what is the difference between an American and a Canadian Canadian accent? I don't know. I don't notice a difference. Four eighty seven. Two more likes. Twenty nine likes. Pressure is building. Love the pop. Looks like a ton of fun to play with. Okay, look, it was good to have a look at some of the chat things there. If you do want to bring something to our attention, just put a hashtag question. So hash question in the chat and we'll be sure to make sure we have a look at that. Um, Ken is fresh out and wants an entire case of Vegemite. Um, I just saw from Mark T. Yeah, okay, <laughs> let's move on from that. So next, we're going to have a look at building the beast. Right. So I just wanted to have an informal chat about the kind of Frankenstein moment of what you went <laughs> through when you said, I want to build a big aircraft. Where did it start? I don't know. It was just something silly that happened, you know. I, um, I started looking around at, uh, at what's the biggest drone that's available, you know. Um, and uh, uh, the the production ones or the the, the, the professional machines are in, in the the twenty thousand, twenty five thousand, thirty thousand dollar pit mark, you know. Um, then I went to I found a site, a, a Chinese site, no doubt, um, that, that uh, made all sorts of bits and pieces for drones. Mm -hmm. It's tarot, uh, as in as in tarot cards, and they had these ones, and this is the biggest one I could find, which was the T eighteen. Mm -hmm. um, I think I can't remember the exact cost. It was. Uh, it's not expensive. It was only maybe uh, seven hundred bucks, I think, for the whole for, for the whole for the for the whole frame. Mm -hmm. But it comes in a box, and then you have to follow the Chinese instructions to put it together, yeah. which is which are worse than IKEA instructions. <laughs> so you. You spent an awful lot of time putting things together, then pulling it apart, and then putting it back together, and pulling it apart, and you know, 
And then uh, uh, I found a site, an American site, mm -hmm. believe it or not, uh, KDE. Um, uh, and they, they, they build, um, what is it called? KDE Direct. And they build yeah. um, uh, motors and propellers and speed controllers, all electrical gear. And on that site, they've got a, um, a, a build your own system a page. And all you do then is just put in what the weight of the, the aircraft uh, you want it to be, the the, uh, the size of the propellers, um, and the size of the battery. So you write in, you know, 6S battery, 18-inch propellers, and then maybe, and I thought, oh, I'll go 15 kilo as a, as a, good, a good round figure. And up comes a whole list of motors and propellers that you can use. Uh, obviously, all their parts, you know. So, what was the name of that website again? I'll just put it on the screen for anyone who wants yeah. to look. K D E Direct. Dot com, I assume. Yeah. Uh, a great website. A lot, a lot of tutorial videos on there um, uh, about the, the the way they set the propellers up. Um, we've got. I want to get the triples. The triples on there. At the moment, I've only got. Um, a, Double bladed props, very cheap. But once I get the uh, the machine running properly, or actually, I'll, I'm, I'm handing it over to John Morrison. He's going to put a, uh, a new flight controller in it, mm. um, so we can get it certified by CASA. Um, so, uh, just yeah. rewind and play that again. You're getting certified by CASA, the beast. The beast. Okay. Yeah. And the because reason for getting it certified, what what's the it's under it's under twenty five kilo, but mm -hmm. it's well and truly over seven kilo. So he's looking for the seven to twenty five kilo um, certification mm -hmm. for his uh, REOC, um, and then we're going to use the beast to to uh, apply for that, and then get my license upgraded as well. Okay. So that I can. Yeah. Okay. But so let's the, yeah. So let's continue. So you, you've gone to that website and you've typed in some numbers, and you know it's come back with some recommended configurations for you. That, yes. So uh, then I um, uh, and I actually I contacted a, 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 an Aussie guy who was supposed to have been the agent for um, um, KDE in Australia, mm -hmm. but he's since he's since shut his business down and not bothered doing it anymore. Mm. Um, but I and I spent so much money on their motors and propellers that they actually he actually gave me another drone. You can see that. <laughs> Okay, so, a little racing drone that I've, I haven't put together yet, but you know it's got little. <laughs> um, so you can see that, that I, I'd spent a few bucks, you know, about four and a half grand just on the motors and propellers and, and uh, speed controllers and mm -hmm. you know, that sort of gear. Then you've got to wire it all up. Okay, uh, and that's that's uh, yeah. So I've, I've I've gone from from a guy who knew nothing about electronics to uh, to reading everything I could lay my hands on. To, uh, to to work out to make sure I got the right did the right thing, um, it's a, it's a fascinating it's a fascinating exercise. Uh, I started at the wrong end. Should have started at working on building a small one, you know, which I I eventually did. I went and I, I bought one of these little um, DJI uh, 450 flame wheels, you know, and put one of those together it takes probably a couple of hours, you know. And how much you spend on that? On that? Oh, that was so long ago. Um, I bought it from a hobby shop, so it was too expensive. They don't okay. charge too much money, you know. You can yeah. you can buy them off the um, off um, the internet from from DJI. It's got a um, a um, NASA NASA light uh, flight controller in there. Mm -hmm. Very nice little flight controller. As you can see, it's got the I don't know if you can see that. The release mechanism, or um, or um, if you want to, if you want to uh, drop some ropes or wires or whatever, you know, yeah, or or a fishing bait, you know, um, that's the way to start. Start off on small things, so you've got the idea of what the what the flight, how how to set up a flight controller, how to set up uh, uh, your thrusts, uh, mm -hmm. uh, which that 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 uh, websites. Uh, exceptional for for that sort of to, to, to get that sort of information um the um yeah to, to learn what what size battery you need 
uh, what sort of uh, current draw you're going to have. Um, it's just it's, it's it's a fascinating exercise, and once you've once you've built a small, if you want to just build a small cheap drone, it gives you a better insight on on how to fly the things and how to take care of them. You know? Yeah, absolutely. And you can okay. also buy other little toys. I just found this thing on the on the net that I was uh, just playing with. Uh, can we see that? Uh, let's get your full screen again. Oh, yeah. Full screen. Okay. You like the it? claw. It's called a, uh, a mantis, a mantis claw, and yeah. that cost cost me a whole twenty six dollars. Uh, it just comes in a little. <laughs> it's just a stupid little thing. I tried, okay. I, you know, very, very difficult to fly with because, as you know, you've got the pendulum effect once, once, the, once the drone's flying but, and the, the land on the object that you want to pick up, uh, you'll be there for hours. Yeah. Speaking of the it's pendulum more... effect, did you see the video last week where we had the tricopters? Yes, yes, yes. That was fascinating. That was, that was awesome fascinating. how they were dealing with the pendulum effect down below. Yeah. I, 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 it'd be interesting how they work that out. Because I know from my uh, my years of uh, I did a bit of crane driving, mm. and you, you need you need to you, you need to chase the the load with the jib. You, once mm. you start swinging, the, the, you get the pendulum from the from the, the jib when you're slewing around, mm. and then then you've got to you've got to stop the jib. The, the load keeps swinging, and then you've got to chase it to to, to re, re, remove the uh, the pendulum, the swing out of it. You know, yeah. So uh, to do that with a drone, yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So you mentioned one other website that um, when we were talking before the show that was an, a useful tool for you. There was. Uh, now, where did I write that down? I made, I made a list. We've got a painless, painless RC model reviews. And then we've got you? RC. Oh, RC model reviews. That guy is, is a, he's, he's a genius. He's a New Zealander. Um, if you, we won't hold that against him, but. No, nah, but <laughs> if if anyone has um, a regular YouTube watcher, there's a channel um, by a guy by the name of XJet. He's eccentric and nuts, but he is really really smart. Um, yeah. He has yeah. a few rants from time to time about you know regulations and so forth, which yeah. I agree with him. You know, you've got to go and speak your mind on some of these things. But let me just put his website up. Um, what was it? RC model reviews.com I'll just chuck that up on the screen as well um, so how did you use some of his stuff what 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 was what uh, his is you there? just purely purely educational just to to learn how how um, um, the speed controllers work goes mm -hmm. right into it he's an electrical engineer so he knows what he's talking about um, how uh, Beck's work uh, battery elimination circuits and circuitry um, any, uh, FPV stuff, uh, aerials. You'll tell you, you, he's got endless number of, uh, of tutorials that, uh, that mm -hmm. you can watch. Um, and yeah, speaking of tutorials, there was then the Painless Three Hundred and Sixty, and then Painless Three Hundred and Sixty. That he does a lot of reviews of, of products, product reviews, yeah, um, uh, and how to, uh, and builds, how to build uh, uh, FPV drones. Um, yeah, another um, very, very useful um, YouTube site. So that's a YouTube channel and encourage everyone here to uh, go and look that up, Painless360. Um, yeah. Really, really good channel to go and have a look at about building drones. But we'll leave that there for today and move on to our next topic. So thank you for sharing that. And certainly I, I look forward to seeing some more um, stories of the beast flying at some point in the near future. Yes, we'll have it uh, up small children or something, you know. Yeah. So moving on from that, talking about hacking and the DJI Go app. Um, now, I'll just pause all of the chat stuff at the moment because I can't do that at the same time as talking, uh, you know, brains doing two things at once. Um, I don't know if, Mel, if you can have another go at um, controlling that if it works great if not so be it anyway um, so the DJI Go app now I've got a couple of photos and I'll just put the first one up on the screen so 
let's make that full screen. So this is a photo from the DJI app on my phone. Now, the guy who's listed there, he's um, a new member in the, um, the Slack groups. So if you want to get into the hacking, definitely um, go to Slack or another place you can go to is um, dji.retroroms.info. That website has lots of information about hacking um, if you want to go and play with your drone um, and in a different way than they originally intended. We'll just go to the next photo. So this is what happens after you click configure. So you get to decide if you want to set FCC or CE power levels. Um, now, FCC is stronger and will give you more signal. It's as simple as that. Now, this has predominantly been tested on Mavics, but does have some effect on other models as well. Built into the, the app is some um, some logic that will also make this work on a Phantom 4 Pro. So I know I'm getting a lot more um, signal out of mine. Moving on to the next photo, um, enable boost. Now, this one is a little bit controversial. Some people say they have no problems with it. Um, in the app, it says, yes, use it with caution. So the, the reason for the caution there is that the signal level is certainly going to heat up the circuitry in the, the, the software defined radio in your controller a little bit more than they originally intended. So use it with caution and understand definitely um, not so much on a hot, warm day. Um, I'll leave it at that. But you don't want to melt the insides of your remote controller. But if you think you know what you're doing, um, use it with caution. And then beyond that, have we got one more photo? Enable 32 channel. So that's the 32 channel mod for those of you who are flying a Phantom. And we've got one more, I think. Um, changing the frequency. This is mainly applicable to um, a Mavic. If you want to lock your, uh, your transmission to particular frequency bands or use the default setting to allow both. So this is just what you can see on the, the modified hacked version of the DJI application. Now, I should have prepared better and had this on the screen, and I'll put it there in just a couple of moments. Uh, where are we? Have I got that news slide? No. There we go. I'll use this one. There we go. So I mentioned this at the beginning, dji.retroroms.info, and it's got some other stuff there for the news. Just take off that rest of the URL, dji.retroroms.info. That website has a lot of information if you want to start playing around and modifying your drone, either the software that's on the drone or the software that's in the remote controller. Now, I'll just quickly talk a little bit more um, about the whole process. So there's two ways you can do it. One of them is by jailbreaking your phone. If you've got an iPhone, jailbreaking that to make it easier to load the modified application onto. Um, that's the path that I took. Um, there are alternatives available where you can take the modified application and sign it and through third-party servers and get that app loaded onto your phone. You can load it for seven days at a time, but that's a little bit annoying. But again, dji.retroroms.info, have a look at that website, and there's a page that talks about how to do this yourself if you're interested. Um, there's one last thing. The, there's a particular one file called tweak.js that people are updating and editing and modifying themselves. There are new versions of tweak.js available all the time. The good news is that you don't have to modify uh, you don't have to reload the IPA file, the actual package, every time you update that tweak.js file. Um, you can just upload that with iTunes. And for those who don't live in the US, certainly getting that extra range out of your um, aircraft, it certainly does make a big difference in the quality of the image you get back and the range and performance of um, the, the radio there. Anyway, Paul, comments, thoughts, now that I've had my rant? It's oh, not really around. Um, um, too technical for me. That's too technical <laughs> for you. Ah, it's all good. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not into. Uh, yeah, it's uh, again. Um, 
video transmission. I, uh, yeah, it's something I've, I haven't got my head around yet. That's the biggest problem I've got. Yeah. Okay, so that's that topic. And now if I go to my list over here. So we move on from there to... And I pressed the wrong button again. I'll get it right one day. So at this point, we've got a bunch of videos which have been um, collated for us. Um, thank you, Greg Hilton, for putting all of that together. These videos were generally shot over the last week um, or found by him over the last week and all from around Australia. So, you know, we're Oz by Drone. We want to share with our, both our local viewers and those from other parts of the world about what it is that we have in our country. And I'm just trying to get this to the right part of the screen and it's not behaving. So just bear with me for 20 seconds. There we go. Oz and ready to go. Let's have a look at that video. So certainly the Australian outback there, some beautiful, beautiful imagery. And I love sharing this because a lot of people who, you know, see the couple of kangaroos and think that's all Australia is, it's a little bit more than that. But certainly we're full of the red dirt. This one is particularly interesting. I see that there's some, some birds there doing what I call some murmuration. Um, it's a, you know, a characteristic that birds do when they're flying together in, in a flock. And yeah, for, for those people who are in the IT industry and the computer industry, and there's some really, watch this, here we go. Getting very close. Ooh. Oh, a small hit there, but anyway, moving on. In the computer industry, they actually look at um, they look at birds and they they look at those murmurations and how they do interact with each other as ways of designing artificial intelligence. So really cool. Hey, where's that? Um, let me get my notes together. Yeah. That was um, this one's by Oz Beach Andy, and it's a deserted beach. Um, it'll be um, South Australia. Oh yeah. Right. Right. Why am I seeing? Is that the cliff face there? Mm. Uh, I think we may have the videos out of sequence, but oh no, there's our deserted beach. Yeah. Okay, now we're going to have a look at Ice Spike. So Ice Spike is certainly um, in the channel today. We've seen him in the chat room. Now, for those who don't know Ice Spike, I encourage you to have a look at the description for the video and go over to his channel and do support him. Um, basically, he's a biker from way back who decided it was that time of life when he needed three wheels instead of two. Um, <laughs> some beautiful footage from around Australia. And um, he's got the Mavic, um, the Ferrari edition in red. Um, do have a look at the full video on his channel and support him, it's great. I looked at these and I was thinking at times, you know, is he gonna hit himself as he's doing those orbits around as he's flying? But anyway. Yeah. 
moving from there, this one's from Brandon Murray, shot with a DJI Inspire 2 at Redhead Beach. Some surfing at sunset. And again, for those who are not from our part of the country or our part of the world, I encourage you to come visit Australia, have a look at the beautiful colours we have in our oceans over here. Then moving on from that, we've got some drone footage from Waterloo Corner, South Australia, um, shot by Jessica Eddy, or Edie, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, but awesome that we've got some, some more women in drones in Australia. In fact, I came across Jessica and two other women earlier today um, while looking at some, some websites, doing some great footage. Beautiful. And then after that, we've got Smart Stream Technology. They're doing some installation of some technology, but it's a Smart Stream EcoBite gross pollutant trap. <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I like to include some of the technical things as well because it, um, it gives you an idea of some of the other uses that people are finding for, for drones and drone technology. Yeah, we've done with uh, with John Morrison. We've done a few uh, building um, surveys as well, mm. before and after, where they need to do uh, a refurb on a building. So um, that's very handy for uh, for the builders. Yeah, we just missed one a couple of minutes ago. That was um, the top end of Australia. Some some great rocks and um, interesting things out in the Kimberley. And now we're on to some kangaroos at Lake George near Canberra. Now this is the traditional Australian look. They're moving from there out to Malabar, which is close to Sydney. Filming this with a DJI Spark. A lot of people ask all the time, you know, is the oh. Spark a good drone? So it just goes to show. Yeah. We've got two more to go. This one by Sher Wagu, full blood cattle ballon. I don't know what a ballon is in the terms of cattle, but some, some drone footage of their cattle in the back paddocks of the ballon farm. So that's the name of the farm. And certainly Australia is famously known for its cattle farming. And one last one, some WA footage from Jacques Demange, um, shot from various locations through the south, uh, th through southwestern Australia during summer of 2017-18, but um, only just recently published. I tried windsurfing once, so I was hopeless at it. <laughs> Shocking. Okay, so let's have a look in the chat room, see what's happening there. I'll just turn the chat thingo back on again. Jokey, Joey Jerky. Roo Jerky, okay.
Ken Heron, you deserve it. Hi, Spike. It was a beautiful video. Uh, Spike is uh, a bit of a character, but definitely subscribe to his channel if you haven't done so already. Don't eat the kangaroos, according to Ken. Those red rocks, etc. Yeah, Ken's just put Spike's channel up on the chat. Please do um, support him. He, he does uh, th that. That is his, if I understand correctly, his first um, serious video, and it's really, really good. Um, Steve Carpenter asking, how do we find more about those collection tubs for attaching to drones? So I'll let you take that one, Paul. Uh, well, I built that one. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so, so short answer a... is Morrison Aerial Robotics is the website. If you go to that website and um, you'll be able to just send um, me, a, yeah, send me a million dollars and I'll make one for you. <laughs> uh, what else have we got? Rue Berger says four by four camping drones. Maybe not. <laughs> Ausbeach, um, no problem with the plug. You do some really good footage I, and I enjoy watching it all the time. So thank you for that. Let's stop the show to read meaningless chat. Well, I am, Adrian. <laughs> We've got to the end of the show anyway. What do you call a lazy baby kangaroo? A pouch potato. Uh, <laughs> that was bad. Look, at this, time, at this point, I think we'll leave it for the day. Um, I'm going to just uh, end with a couple of usual announcements that we have at the end of the show. Let me just um, get the subscriber count up one more time before we disappear, though. See if we've moved any. Here we go. It's coming. It's thinking. It's computing. We've pressed the button, but no one's home. No, it's not working. Anyway, doesn't matter. We'll live. We'll survive. But I will go then to the announcements, our regular announcements. So first of all, um, if you are not already a subscriber, help our subscriber count go up. YouTube.com slash OzByDrone. And if you um, help us to get to that 1,000, of course, um, that'll be really useful because then we can give away that prize. I do want to give it away sooner rather than later. Please also like and share our page on Facebook. Moving on, Twitter. We do announcements about our show on Twitter. So whatever social media platform you like, we can make sure we can stay in touch. If you want to send something by snail mail, there is an address for you, 5 slash 127 Princess Highway, Sylvania, New South Wales, 2224. Um, I've sent some biscuits, some, some Tim Tams and some Vegemite overseas. I don't know what it is that you'd like to send here, but if you do want to send it, that's where you can send it to. And if you would like your video to be featured in our show next week, upload at gregkunit.com. Um, please do not attach the actual video file because it will fill up my mail server and it will be very unhappy and clog up everyone else. But just send a link to your video either on a share drive or YouTube or whatever it is and we'll have a look at that next time. So that's about all we've got. Next week I don't know who the guest is yet so that's something if um, I'll, I'll try and work that out and put an announcement up when I create the event for next week. Looking forward to seeing you next time. Thanks for joining us Paul. Thanks for joining us everyone Thank in you. the chat room and see you Thank next you. time. Bye for now. Bye. Bye everyone. <laughs>